2.5G and 5G are networking buzzwords which are creeping into the mindset of AV professionals and IT professionals across the globe. And this is due to the fact we're starting to see 2.5G and 5G networking components coming to market. But why is this? This course will explore this question and lay out some interesting viewpoints which will help you decide whether these components are beneficial or not. We're acutely aware of the fact that 1 gig and 10 gig networks are now commonplace, not just in the world of Pro AV, but outside of it too. No, really, there's another world outside of Pro AV which uses IP. Honestly, but rather than try to understand that other world, for the sake of our sanity, let's just stick with our Pro AV world for now. Let's check in with what we currently use to distribute video. We've got matrix switches, which are proprietary solutions to drive latency-free 4K video content to multiple displays. We've also got an abundance of 1 gig IP solutions, which also drive video content to multiple displays. However, unlike matrix switches, they need to apply significant compression to fit the video streams into the 1 gig bandwidth available. We've also got SDVOE which matches the performance of a matrix switch by utilizing the bandwidth of 10 gig networks to remove the need for compression and provide latency-free 4K video content across many more endpoints than a matrix switch can provide, and for a lot less money. So, what would a 2.5 gig or 5 gig network bring to the table which can offer your clients an alternative solution which hasn't even been thought about. Well, let's begin by figuring out why the network manufacturers decided to make this stuff in the first place. And to do that, we have to look beyond our own requirements a little. 2.5 gig and 5 gig has a very specific use case today, which is to allow high-end Wi-Fi access points to provide more bandwidth to more devices, which are becoming more dependent on IP to operate. Back in our world though, we still need a reliable cabling infrastructure. Speaking of cables, let's dig into that a little more. Manufacturers of 2.5 and 5 gig components are also appealing to current cabling infrastructures, which are prohibitively expensive to replace. And whilst this is a valid argument, it's hardly as future-proofed as some people make it out to be. There's only so much you can do with old infrastructure before it really does need replacing. And given that 10 gig, which is the logical step up from 2.5 gig and 5 gig, doesn't work well with 10 year old cables, how long will it really be before the 10 year old cable finally gives up? 8K, for example, needs a lot of bandwidth. How long will it be before 8K displays are readily available from Best Buy? Speaking of 8K, let's explore that. We know 4K can be squeezed into 1 gig, albeit not as perfectly as a matrix switch can do it. And the advent of 2.5 gig and 5 gig means that the same cabling infrastructure could be pushed to its limit to allow 8K to be distributed. But think about it. Is that really a future-proofed solution? Sending 8K content over a cable which was designed for 1 gig bandwidth. Are you ready to test that infrastructure to the point where you can comfortably say to your client that it will support their 8K demands? Furthermore, are we going to stop at 8K? How much more are we going to be able to squeeze out of that cabling before you're left with no choice but to swap it out? We really do need to be so much more careful with the term future-proofed than we ever were before. Now, it could be that you considered these options, these potential technology gotchas, and you're still happy to push ahead. So let's consider the longer term benefits. Is this new 2.5 gig and 5 gig technology likely to stick around for the foreseeable future? Are your 2.5 gig and 5 gig products still going to be current in two or three years from now? Let's think about that.
We all know the demand for any new product is key to its success. Increased demand makes products cheaper and more readily available. However, if that demand isn't high enough, the people who do buy it won't see those benefits. Everyone thought the Segway was going to be the future of transportation around a city until people realised that the Segway mm, couldn't get up a flight of steps. And as a result, while you can still buy a Segway today, it still costs a lot of money. Ultimately, if the demand simply isn't high enough, the manufacturers of that equipment will stop making it because, well, people aren't buying it. And this needs to be considered with 2.5 and 5 gig networking components. Seriously, would you install a 2.5 gig network on a client project if you thought that within the next couple of years, the manufacturers stopped producing and supporting that equipment? Think about the cost of having to replace that redundant equipment for new stuff. Then consider, when you do that, if your client would be happy to go down to one gig in order to keep things working properly. Sobering thought, isn't it? 10 gig is here now, and it's not going away. In fact, the age-old Moore's Law, which has been pretty accurate since the 1970s, dictates that even 10 gig will be old news in the next few years. Oh. And it's also worth considering that the world of Pro AV represents around 0.5% of the global networking business. So, even if 2.5 gig and 5 gig took off and everyone in our industry adopted it, even the matrix switch stalwarts who haven't even adopted 1 gig yet, that other world outside of ours still needs to embrace it significantly before the network manufacturers, who we absolutely rely on, decide they're going to continue building and supporting it.